Welcome to this webinar on the European Solidarity Corps Solidarity Projects Planner. If you are an organisation or youth worker, this webinar should provide you with some ideas on how to help young people create their very own solidarity project. Today, I will be introducing you to some resources and materials that are aimed at guiding informal groups on their journey from solidarity project idea to solidarity project application. Before we explore our range of resources and how to use them, let's take a look at solidarity projects and how they work. Solidarity projects are initiatives which put power and agency back into the hands of young people themselves. With this type of activity, groups of at least five young people aged between 18 to 30 can develop and implement their own projects in their local community. It could address key challenges within the local area, whilst also helping to tackle regional or even national issues. Groups must have a clearly defined topic that they wish to explore together, with concrete activities that involve all participants. These initiatives are youth-led, and the whole design of the project should be shaped entirely by the young people themselves. The spirit and structure of the project will be entirely up to the group, so there are plenty of chances to get creative. As I mentioned earlier, solidarity projects should aim to tackle an issue within the local community, whilst also helping to potentially tackle larger societal issues. Consequently, groups will need to think about the problems that affect them and their fellow citizens when formulating a project idea. Perhaps climate change issues such as pollution or high levels of waste in the local area could be addressed by a project. Maybe there is a high number of young people leaving school without qualifications. Or it could be that they live somewhere that has frequent instances of antisocial behaviour. Alternatively, the group may wish to address an issue that is present both in the community and at a national level, like gender and racial inequality, or even low youth engagement in politics and democratic affairs. Remember, Solidarity projects are really about problem solving. The challenges and issues that a solidarity project can address are endless and really depend on the specific region in which the group is situated. To aid with this process, why not think about using the map of solidarity as seen on this screen? This resource has been created with young people in mind and can be a great visual tool when building the very foundations of a project outline. Gather the group together and ask them each to present an issue that affects their local town or region. If wider societal issues are discussed, you can place them elsewhere on the map. By the end of the session, the group should have a number of different topics that they feel passionate about and that their project might wish to address. From here, why not encourage further discussions to focus in on just one specific community problem? This will act as the launch pad for the group, from which they can start to flesh out their very own project plan. To download the map of solidarity, head over to the UK European Solidarity Corps website. So, now that the group have identified an issue that affects them, what next? This is where the Solidarity Project Planner comes in. This resource has been specifically developed to help young people create a simple and easy to understand project outline. By completing each area of this planner, the group should have the basis of what will become their application form. There's no specific order in which to complete this resource, the group can work on either side of the planner first. In this webinar, we will be working our way through each section of this resource, beginning with the objectives box, which you can find on the top left hand side of the page. Every great project will start with a simple set of aims and objectives. These should be linked directly to the societal issue that the group have chosen to address. So if, for example, the group have identified high levels of plastic waste on their local beach, the project objective could be to reduce the levels of pollution in their local waters. They could also include additional relevant objectives, such as to promote sustainability, green living and environmental awareness. In all cases, objectives should be a cohesive and clearly outlined in simple terms. More importantly, objectives need to be realistic and should align with the overall capacity of the group. Remember, projects are only between two to 12 months, so the group should aim to work within their own capabilities. In this box, the group can create a brief list of the primary intentions of the project. The group should revisit this box as they work through the planner to ensure that their activities remain relevant to the aims listed here. Once you have identified the project objectives, the group can move into thinking about themselves. In line with programme guidelines, there needs to be a minimum of five young people aged between 18 to 30 years old. Once group members have been identified, it is good to think about the 
specific skills and competences that each group member can bring to the project. In this box, why not create a list to identify the specific roles that each member might wish to play? If one individual is particularly creative, they could lead on promotion and dissemination. Another might have mathematical based competences, in which case they could take the lead on financial management. There is no right or wrong in this section. Tasks can be shared or allocated accordingly. It is really up to the group. Another thing to think about is the presence of a coach. A coach is a resource person who could have youth work experience to accompany groups of young people and support their participation, as well as to aid in the preparation, implementation and evaluation of the project. The coach will remain outside of the solidarity project. Therefore, he, she or they will not be a member of the group. The group of young people can use the support of one or several coaches, depending on their needs. Ideally, the coach should have skills or knowledge linked to the project objective. So if we return to our example of ocean pollution, the group could recruit a coach with a knowledge of sustainability or conservation. On the other hand, it might be that you have a group of young people who are confident and equipped with all the necessary skills to win their project independently. In this case, the group may not wish to recruit a coach at all. It is not a mandatory requirement. From the makeup of the group, we move on to the activities section. In this section, the group will need to think about the following. How will my activities help to achieve my project objective? Do I want to have one flagship activity or will the project consist of multiple different activities? Can the group realistically undertake these activities in the chosen time frame? Have I made sure that all members of the group are participating in project activities? Fundamentally, this area of the planner is to map out how the overall aims and objectives will be brought to life. Remember, the planner is there to create a simple outline of the project, so the group does not need to have a detailed plan of every activity taking place, but they should have a clear idea of how their actions will help tackle the societal issue. By taking the time to discuss and fill out this part of the planner, the group will be one step closer to tackling the practical and logistical questions within the application form. As we progress around the planner, we come to the financial element of the project, the budget. This area of the planner needs to outline project expenses. Before completing this section, it is recommended that you read pages 53 to 57 of the 2020 European Solidarity Corps Programme Guide. This will help the group to understand what the grant request might be and how they can spend it. In this box, it is important to consider the following. Will I be recruiting a coach? If yes, the group will be eligible to request coaching costs. These costs are based on the country in which the activity is taking place and the number of days they will be working on the project. A full chart breakdown of daily rates can be found on page 57 of the programme guide. Will young people with fewer opportunities be taking part in the project? These funds are based on real costs and should be used to aid the participation of young people experiencing fewer opportunities. Any exceptional costs should be clearly evidenced here. How many months will my project be? The calculation of a project management funds are easy to understand and are simply calculated on the duration of your project. A set rate of 500 euros is applied per month. So if your project is two months long, you will receive 1000 euros for this budget category. Six months, this would be equal to 3000 euros. Similar to the activities section, it is not vital to have an intricate breakdown of funds. As long as the group understands the budgetary rules for their project, this will suffice. A more detailed account of project funds will be required in the application form. Last but not least, we come to the outcome section of the planner. In many ways, this final box in the planner should link up to the very first box. Outcomes and objectives should be similar and cyclical. So as we dis discussed earlier, if the project would like to tackle plastic waste and encourage sustainable living, it is expected that the outcome would be lower levels of plastic pollution and a growing interest in green and eco lifestyles. The outcome section is really about how the project will measure that this has taken place. As a result, it is important for groups to think about the following. Will the project have a physical outcome? This could be resource, a report, communication outputs, etc. How will I evaluate the outcomes of my project? Will this be done through questionnaires, surveys? What will the impact of the project be on the group? What will the impact on the project be on those outside of the group? For example, the local community. 
Having a clear and logical set of achievable goals and outcomes is the key to a strong project, so the group do not need to put excessively high expectations on what they hope the outcomes to be. Indeed, it may be that as the project progresses, a number of unexpected outcomes occur, and this is something to think about. Now that we've come to the end of the outcomes section, let's turn the page of the planner and solidify the final project idea. In this diagram, much like the outcome box, the group can input information on the strengths and benefits that their project will bring. This is divided into three sections, benefits to the community, benefits to the group, and European solidarity core topics. Think about the skills that group members might develop during their project lifecycle, such as financial management or digital competences. Also, contemplate the knowledge and awareness that the project might bring to the local community. Finally, try to jot down the topics that this project idea might align with. This could be solidarity, intercultural awareness, climate change, democratic participation. Please note this list is non-exhaustive. Remember, every great project will start with a simple idea. So like the rest of the planner, the group do not have to provide an overly complex detailed plan. So now we have completed both sections of our planner, the solidarity project should have begun to take shape. From here, the group can think about having further discussions, as well as moving on to complete the ESC 31 application form. This form can be found in the application web form portal, the link to which can be found on the UK's European Solidarity Corps website. As well as outlining programme guidelines, our website also has a wealth of resources, blog posts, case studies, all of which shed light on the great opportunities available to both young people and organisations through the programme. We wish you the best of luck on your journey through the European Solidarity Corps. Should you have any questions or queries on solidarity projects or the wider programme, please feel free to contact us at eusolidaritycorps at ecorus.com and we will do our best to help. Thank you and goodbye.